Lust is an emotion by Adidas Samraj, taken from Compulsory Dancing. Sexual feeling for someone is completely a matter of your responsibility. Because it is an automaticity in you, however, you think it is something that happens to you, but it is a self-generated automaticity that you constantly trigger to make yourself feel better. Sexual love arises quite naturally in the intimacy we enjoy with the one to whom we are married. There is no other relationship quite like marriage. Thus, in one who is in love with God, surrendered and always capable of love in human relations, sexuality is not a universal desire. It is a functional enjoyment and extension of happiness that arises only in the intimacy permitted with one's spouse. It is not random. Such a person is not involved exclusively with the sex function in any case. He or she exists fundamentally in ecstatic communion with God. The marriage relationship is a matter of love and the expression of love and nothing else. What other form of relationship is possible with your spouse or with anyone else for that matter? If you are a devotee, you live as love communion. Whatever your sexual relationship turns out to be is simply the case for you, and so be it. Therefore, the first thing you must do is transcend lust. You need not renounce sex if you can fulfil it in love as sexual communion. But it will never be sexual communion in your case if you remain a lustful personality an essentially loveless and therefore unsurrendered, self-possessed personality. You cannot be lustful and enter into sexual communion. You cannot be lustful and be truly married. You cannot promise your constant attention and fidelity if you are a lustful person, because you cannot feel that such a commitment is yours to offer. You do not really believe that sexual attention is under your control. You think you are possessed by a demonic sexual force. In some sense, that is true, but it is your lustfulness. You are self-possessed. Your self-possession is your own concern. It cannot be relieved magically. Thus the ultimate gesture of transcendence is necessarily yours. Grace attracts you to itself with great force. But if you are repelled, if you do not surrender, then you will take a great deal of time to become free. Therefore, you must fundamentally realise in your marriage relationship that lust must be transcended in the commitment to marriage itself. You cannot enter into the marriage relationship in order to fulfil lustful intentions. Lust, is, lust inevitably destroys the union of marriage. You must emerge from the cave of self-possession and you must be converted from lust. You have lived your sexuality in a random and self-possessed fashion all your life, so that what you feel as sexual desiring is essentially lustful. You may not think of it as lust. You may think of it as normal desire, but you lust for its satisfaction. You are constantly desiring, considering sexual fulfilment and presenting yourself as a lustful personality, at least psychologically, inwardly, subjectively and in some outwardly sexual way as well. You are driven by sexual lust, lust possessed and disturbed by it. Eventually, if this sexual craving is not su su sufficiently satisfied, you become extremely unstable emotionally. You will notice that when you are lustful, 
you are disturbed emotionally. If you exploit yourself sexually beyond your usual intention to fulfil desire, you become obsessed by the fulfilment itself. You become hyped by it, exaggerated, even more lustful. If you become sensitive to it, you will also observe that lustfulness hurts. It is desperate. Lustfulness does not love. It is never satisfied. And it is always betraying relationships. Thus, the problems that appear in your marriage are problems of lust, and lust is invariably accompanied by unlove or self-possession. The constant w wondering if one is loved, the unwillingness to be loved, the constant feeling that one is betrayed or about to be betrayed. Instead of worrying about being betrayed, you must be more certain that you are not betraying your spouse. If you are lustful, you have thousands of lust lovers, inevitably, all the ones in your mind, your memory, and your daily association. All the shapes that flash around in your unconscious mind, and all the driven need and the easy access to sexual titillation, mutilate your relations and your intimacies and cause you to betray them. You constantly complain, for example, about your lack of sexual fulfilment. You do not necessarily say to your husband or wife, I'd like to be sexually fulfilled. But you punish your spouse in all kinds of other ways, in thousands of daily episodes of emotional reactivity, endless betrayals and failures to serve and love simply. You mutilate your spouse out of sexual failure and frustration. You are dominated by sex rather than being the master of sex through love. Your marriage relationship must be characterised by love and freedom from obsession and lust, but willful celibacy is neither appropriate nor sufficient for people like you. Something more than just a mechanical choice is required. You must realise a complete transformation of the sexual dimension of your life so that it is utterly free of lust and practiced only as an expression of love in your intimate marital relationship. That is the complete and total end of the matter. That is how you must practice sexuality and that is all it amounts to. Beyond sex there is all the rest of the totality of existence with which you must enter into a heartfelt association. Lust, you see, is an emotion and an obsession. Therefore, it is like an emotional problem, a form of unlove. Like any other kind of sin, lust is an emotional drive that completely absorbs us when we are overcome by it and prevents the heart from radiating the emotion of love. Lust is a limit on the heart. Thus you must be free of the emotion that is lust. Such freedom is possible only if you surrender to God, live as love and serve your spouse in love, never permitting what is sexual to complicate or undermine the love relationship. In such a disposition you can fulfil the sexual impulse in that relationship with the frequency and the quality of intensity that is natural to you in love rather than in lust. Then you can enter into a simple and true intimacy with one another. To be free of lust is not to be non-sexual. You must discover the difference. Sexual love is free. It is not binding, not obsessive like lust. Sexual love arises totally within the play of truly intimate relationship and therefore it cannot arise casually. Devotee Beloved, you are right about the painfulness of lust and it is so serious. It also feels violent, especially promiscuous lust. Adida Lust is like nature 
not like man, you see. In nature, there is no humour at all. In nature, everything is very serious. Lust has that same serious quality. Love in a sexual relationship or sex in a love relationship is not really serious. Anything serious is a depression of feeling and delight and humour. Beloved Devotee It is interesting, Master, that in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Lust may arise in the mind of the seer, but he is not disturbed by it. I have never really understood until now why lust could continue to arise in the sage. Lust is present in him as nature, but he does not presume it as a limit. Adida. Lust has no power to transform him in any fundamental way because, acknowledging his own weakness, he practices only one thing, continuous love of God, and therefore the confession of the practice of love in all his relations. Love is the one thing to practice, and you must do it with profound intensity. You must simply come to terms with this consideration. You must become saints, you see. Stop deluding yourself and everybody else about how ordinary and out of control you are. Become saints, because you must in every moment simply love and surrender to God. How can you propose anything else to me? You must stop rejecting this higher idea of yourself because of your lust. Your lustfulness prevents you from becoming elegant. It makes you continue to be ordinary and mediocre, whereas you must at least become saints. However, if you cannot commit yourself from the heart to God, you will also not be able to relieve your marriage of your life or yourself or your spouse of lust and all the problems of lust. They will not disappear by any means other than this commitment. You cannot truly be married. You cannot promise or represent the possibility of fidelity unless you are a devotee, unless you are committed to the way of love. You must practice that way so profoundly in your feeling from moment to moment that it totally transforms your life. That is the great creative adventure. Do you imagine that you can surrender to God and feel lust at the same time? If you do, it is because you do not recognise lust as a form of contracted feeling, as a limit on the heart. When you are being lustful, you can imagine, perhaps, that you are also somehow loving, but you are not. You cannot love because lust is a self-possessed negative emotion. That is why it is universally declared to be a form of sin. Lust is not love. It is not radiance. It is not surrender to infinity, to the living God. Lust cannot be coincident with God communion. You must understand that and be transformed in your sexuality by persisting in love of God and surrender to God. There is no fixed rule such as now you should be celibate. No. Enter into your sexual intimacy in love, free of lust entirely. Surrender to God all the while and see what sexual intimacy becomes then. Stop threatening one another with your lustfulness and acting as if you are an irresponsible person who cannot promise to love and to maintain sexual fidelity with your spouse. You can certainly be a true husband or wife if you will simply love your spouse, if you will practice as a lover of God in every moment, in love with God and in love with your spouse. Surrender, sacrifice yourself, serve in those relations and forget about being troubled by your sin. Your lustfulness has no force if you will simply remember to love, whole bodily, in the moment that lust arises. You will see that lust is transformed its energy is converted and distributed to the whole body and it becomes fullness. Devotee Master, it is remarkable how insatiable lust is. A person may have the sense that if he could play out his lust it would disappear. 
but it is obvious that it does not, Adidas Samraj. That is the way we talk when we are obsessed. We are frantic for an almost mystical fulfilment through sex, you see. We actually give up our lives to it because we refuse to be ecstatic simply and directly. We are refusing to make the essential response of our being in every moment, which is to surrender and love rather than contraction and fear. We have the choice, so why be the reaction to life? Be what is already the case. Become philosophical on that basis, rather than on the basis of this doubting, contracted, self-possessed personality. See what becomes obvious and true when you depend on grace. Give yourself to God. Receive the living and transforming power. Never forget to do it. Stop troubling your spouse with all this lustfulness. Let your whole body be converted by loving and be liberated from all of its sinfulness. This is the greatest yoga, the foundation yoga of divine communion. Communion with the universal current of life by the central nervous system, which is fundamental to our true existence, is obstructed by all of our automaticities. All the inward directed and outward directed qualities of the auto autonomic service nervous system and all the levels of energy autonomic nervous system and all the levels of energy in the central nervous system are obstructed. The entire psychophysical circuitry is obstructed, out of balance, contracted. As long as this is so, we can never realise the purity and absolute bliss of our essential existence. Because we are expressed downward and outward in our earthly lives, we cannot experience the reverse cycle at a very high psychophysical level. As soon as a little life energy begins to rise in us, we think we are already God-realised, and we throw off that energy in the next sexual encounter. Presently you wonder if God exists, or if you are terrified that you are going to die, or you are terrified that you are going to die. You are full of complaints. You are not in love with God at all. You are upset. You are a sinner, you see, literally. You are literally a sinner, turned away from God, missing the mark, emotionally upset in the face of the infinite. Are you not? You do not know very much, and you are angry about many things, especially your own inevitable death. In your marriage, you must become free of lust and simply love one another and practice sexuality as sexual communion in the economy that truly serves your life. But fundamentally, you must live the ecstasy of love communion with the living God. You must practice it, you must be committed to it, and you must be an absolutely stable, absolutely trustworthy, absolutely loving person through that commitment. If you are a woman, you must absolutely be your husband's wife. No doubt about it. He should not have to spend one more day talking with you about your lust. If you are a man... You must be a husband, absolutely, with no doubt whatsoever about it. You must not even secretly be involved in or even entertain the possibility of an erotic, lustful life. Who knows how often the genital embrace will occur if you can persist simply in love. And if you can allow sexuality to be transformed in whatever way it is transformed when you love. Maybe, eventually... You just stop having sex, or maybe not. There is no need to worry about the frequency of sex because there is no prescription for it. But if you simply persist in this divine love and sexual communion, perhaps the actual physical embrace falls away from your relationship. In any case, you must allow yourself to find out. <laughs>